What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. So the Lions versus the other Lions game has just finished. It's the Emirates Lions, the Sigma Lions, the Golden Lions. I've heard a thousand different names for that team, but that game has finally just finished. So I thought we'd do another review video, hence the title. Uh, it was an extremely intense game. It wasn't something I was expecting. I didn't know what to expect so much from the Sigma Lions, the Emirates Lions. I'll call them the Sigma Lions because that's what they were calling them on the TV. Um, but I wasn't expecting them to be quite so intense in that game. When it first kicked off, that first sort of five, ten minutes, they were really going for it. They really had something to try and prove to themselves. And there was a fantastic exchange. In fact, it went on for most of the first half, in all honesty, really pushing the British and Irish Lions against it. Um, I thought coming into this game, they were actually bringing a slightly weaker team this week than they did against the Japan team, where there was a lot of player changes, a couple of new mix-ups. We had the Finn, Russell, Owen, Farrell combos to talk about. A lot more reliance on the English team. And in all honesty, it felt like an England team playing from a couple of years back. They were so fast in terms of attack. The offloads, the, the little inside balls going through, the kicking through a lot of the time. It felt a lot like a sort of 2018, 2019 England team leading into that World Cup. Maybe Warren Gatlin knew how many players played in that team and tried to bring that into his own Lions team, try and take the most of uh, Eddie Jones on there if he could do. So, let's start off talking about uh, the game as we did uh, last week. We will put the general entertainment value points, the scoring system, whatever you want to call it, up here. And, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> in this one far more than japan so we'll get kicked off and uh, start talking about this so after the first kickoff there was a first few minutes of real intense rugby back and forth possession being changed over smashing their way through and it wasn't that long till we got our first try four minutes in reese zam again his try on his debut for the lions how fantastic what a rise this lad has had come from being a bit of a nobody about two years ago and now he's in the wales international team he's now in the lions he's now an official try scorer for the lions what a super Superb career start this guy's had to his career. Going to do fantastic. A lovely bit of loop ball uh, round the back play. Little inside pass going to him. Uh, Chris Harris spreading it wide and then getting a little chip through on his own run. Rezam it just with the pace we know he has. Running round the outside of the Sigma Lions winger. Picking up the ball and going over for a try. Absolutely fantastic. And the conversion was done by Owen Farrell. Not something I was expecting. Owen Farrell having a real good day kicking from T. 100% um, of however many tries they had. <laughs> it's pretty endless. Six or seven tries or so. 100% um, kicking ratio from him. Was expecting to see whether they go for Finn Russell. So the dynamic here of Finn Russell at 10. Taking over the duties at 10. Running the on-field play as a 10. However, the actual 10 kicking duties were given to Farrell both in terms of kicking to post and also to corner and then later on in the game we saw the switch up with Owen Farrell moving to 10 so we'll get on to that a little bit later. Uh, we didn't have to wait long until the second try that came from Anthony Watson. Uh, only three minutes later a brilliant little piece of play here. It was a penalty move forward Ali Price tap and go not wasting any time smashing it through got stopped just short of the line it was a real shame he didn't manage to get over there and then Anthony Watson gets the ball fantastic leg drive drove back about three sigma lions player over the line he goes right near the post owen farrell with another fantastic conversion there so that took them to 14 nil seven minutes into the game so a fantastic way to start off the game for them the next 10 15 minutes was really quite the opposite to the first 15 that we got to see they were really in charge for that first 15 minutes and then that second sort of 15 to 25 minute period it really went against them held in their own five meter channel for so long compound errors coming in it was was one of the big worries i had about so many of the england team moving into this lions team all at one time we saw in the six nations how many penalties a lot of these england players do give away and we were really hoping they were going to shift it up a lot there was quite a few we had johnny hill uh itoje both of them had the same penalty for inferring in the jumper in the line out getting their hands on the jumper not allowed to do that sinclair had hands in the ruck and also a no-arms tackle in there. And this is all in the space of about six or seven minutes. Four penalties come from the English contingency. We also had Falatau from Wales not rolling away on two separate uh, tackles from him. So penalties, compound errors, starting off in the Sigma Lions 22 and ending up five metres from your own try line. Definitely something they wanted to work on. They didn't want to see that. It wasn't really happening that much in the Japan game. There was definitely compound errors towards the end of the first half in that Japan game, but they managed to resolve it and it sort of re rose its head in here and that's what they wanted to fix um so they had 11 minutes solid 
of just defending on their own try line, which was really good work. And in the 23rd minute, they managed to grasp a penalty. Fantastic defensive set from them, not conceding any points at that point. Really well worked. And then I'm sure Warren Gatlin will be looking at that team. Not happy with so many penalties coming from it. However, not conceding any points, absolutely worth it to them. After getting the ball back, we played up the field a little bit more and we definitely got to see there was certainly a bit of an issue for me between Finn Russell and Owen Farrell. That 10-12 combo, a lot of people did talk about it wasn't going to work well. Two sort of fly halves playing alongside each other. We know Owen Farrell doesn't mind playing that inside centre, plays it along with a different number 10. He's used to it most of the time, but this one didn't really link up. There was a couple of times, I don't know if this was a training move or if this is something they were just trying to play from different nations, trying to merge together, trying to use Owen Farrell as a crash ball 12, sort of like a Bundyaki style, uh, not really landing very well. There was three misplays from Finn Russell to Owen Farrell in the first half, popping the ball off to him, too short, knock on coming from Owen Farrell, hitting the ball, not at the speed he wanted to, just getting knocked back, certainly not working for them the way they would have wanted to. So that combo, what we thought might actually be a real strength for the Lions, really showing actually a bit of a weakness in there. So they definitely wanted to try and change that up. And about 30 minutes in, they definitely saw they wanted to change that. And the ball was moved a little bit more. Getting it to Chris Harris, which I think was a much better move. Use him as the crash ball. He's a big guy. Use him to use his weight. And then use Owen Farrell as a second distributor. It began to switch up from there. Uh, 33 minutes in. Ali Price gets his try finally. Didn't manage to get that first one that Watson got. Um, long line out ball. Went over the top. As interesting technique used a lot by the Lions in this game. Going for the long line outs. Avoiding all the jumpers right over the back. Was caught at the back. Owen Farrell looked to go on the outside and left a little pop off on the inside to Ali Price. Took it on the inside. No one going to stop him from five meters out straight over under the post. And again, an Owen Farrell conversion. So working interchange very well. I know the Lions should be very, very happy with that first 30 minutes, really. Unfortunately, they couldn't manage to hang on um, the whole way, which was a real shame for them. Um, Vincent... Chatsuka, I believe, Chatsuka, uh, it's really <laughs> difficult for me to pronounce names, so I fully apologise for that, managing to get a fantastic try, a breakaway run that was a great tackle by Farrell, made it right at the end on the five metre line, managing to stop a great breakaway try from a different player, the ball spread wide, it was a little bit easy to be honest, it went wide about two or three players, Josh Adams hung on his own winger, and Owen Farrell was a little bit short on the inside. Massive gap in between them. And over Chatsuka went for a fantastic try. And a successful kick from Hendrixe, I believe is the pronunciation for the kick that they had. Um, fantastic kick from him. Wasn't the most easy kick. Was on the wrong side for him. But good kick from him. Um, later on in the game, there was right at the halftime marker, actually. Um, a penalty coming in for a high tackle on Hogg. The Lions managed to kick their way all the way into the corner. Ball goes into the mall. The mall went down, trying to spread it wide. Couple of crash balls working their way through. Got to one metre within that try line as Wynn Jones picks up the ball, jumps over the ruck. I mean, he's a big guy. It's not, not the easiest thing to do. Gets over, gets that ball down for a try. However, you'll notice it's not on the board here. That's because it got disallowed, unfortunately. Uh, they were brought back. Courtney Laws in the clear up, performing a neck roll on, uh, on the counter rucker, allowing... Uh, Wynn Jones to be like a salmon out of water, <laughs> jumping over the top. Couldn't quite get there, but only because of the illegal place. So that one was disallowed. So we went in at halftime, 21-7 up. It felt uh, a little bit more 50-50 than the Lions probably would have liked to add from this game. Um, it definitely took its turns in who was in charge of the game. And I think 21-7 was probably a fair result for how it came out at the end of that first half. And then we get into the second half. So the second half, as you can see from the board, is uh, it, it's just basically Josh Adams' name, in all honesty. He just sort of did everything. Um, <laughs> there were so many tries to go through here. Uh, so starting off in the 42nd minute, the Josh Adams try. Ball spreading wide from Ali Price. Really well finished from Josh Adams. We know how good he's been for Wales for so many years when attacking. And his defensive work for me was his weakness, but certainly stepped up for that in the Wales team. And even brought this into the Lions team. His defensive work was brilliant in this game as well. Uh, but managing to beat three defenders on a great little inside run, get himself near the post, making the kick easier for Farrell there. 
Um, counteracted only two minutes later, uh, Rabs Max Wayne got himself a try. Uh, a nice little inside loop pass was spread out to the wing. A great little run for a try. And again, Hendrikse managing to get the conversion for that one. Only four minutes after that, uh, we had uh, Jamie George almost getting a try in what must be one of the most painful non-scores ever. Um, there was another great run by Josh Adams down the wing. Uh, fantastic little run. Performing a little kick on his left boot. Kicks it inside. Jamie George running. Where's the ball going to bounce as it just doesn't pop for him? Knocking the ball across the ground. A real shame for him. It could have been a fantastic try for him. But that is the joy of rugby. The ball doesn't always go how you want it to. The Sigma Lions didn't want to get beaten by that. They wanted to do a bit of what you can do, I can do better. Singwaini uh, running pretty much the length of the field from a failed line out. Uh, it was a number six. I believe he was the flanker. I was trying to catch up when I was watching it. Actually, who made the run? I believe it was Singwaini that made the run. He is a flanker. He plays number six. And he ran a good 80 metres up the field, beating every defender, <laughs> having one of the best tries potentially ever scored against the Lions, only for Stuart Hogg to just be that little bit quicker, managing to get the tackle on the five-metre line. Fantastic tackle from Stuart Hogg, who actually had a really good game. The counter running, not quite as good as we probably saw him play as Scotland in the Six Nations, but the defensive work for him all game was fantastic, even after taking an early knock very early on in the game. Really thought he was going to go off injured very early on, as we saw in the Japan game with Alan Wynn going off super early. But from the captain, great defensive work, and they managed to get away from that without conceding any points. So superb work done there. Six minutes later on to the next Josh Adams try. Try two of four. Um, the Lions had a little uh, crash ball going through. Wasn't really making a lot of ground. We had about three or four little crash balls picking off. Finn Russell with a fantastic weighted crossfield kick. We get to see the Josh Adams try. I'm sure it'd be nice for a couple of England fans to be seeing a Josh Adams crossfield try that wasn't happening in the Six Nations. <laughs> and he'll actually be against a different team. Uh, but really well weighted by Finn Russell. I actually made a note of just how good Finn Russell's kicking was for most of that game, actually, in terms of managing to perform those crossfield kick. Certainly looking like kicking's going to be a big thing for this Lions team. We knew Warren Gatlin liked to do kicking with the Wales team so much. Wouldn't be surprised if it was going to make its way into this Lions team. Certainly the way the kicking was used, grubber kicks through, chipping over the top, crossfield kicks, all utilised in this game, and another successful conversion there from Farrell. At the 60th minute, we got to see some substitutes going in here. And this is where a bit of interesting talk coming here. So Gareth Davis comes on for Ali Price, who we thought would make a bit of an impact from this game. Sam Simmons on for Fala Tower Direct Swap, I sort of thought was going to come on. However, the big thing that I was not expecting, Elliot Daly coming on for Finn Russell. Um, so what happened here was uh, we, of course, then had, I believe, Farrell moved to 10. And Elliot Daly actually took over at 13 rather than 12. And Chris Harris moved uh, to taking over in the 12 position where he has played for Scotland before and works well for him. I think Elliot Daly went to that 13 centre channel, even though um, I, I thought maybe he would go in at full back, um, but it's nice to see that he was going to be able to take in that centre role. And in all honesty, Elliot Daly having a really good game. Um, I, I bashed him quite a lot in the Six Nations because he did not have a good Six Nations. But this Lions game, very nice from him. A lot of great work, very good attacking play from him. And in all honesty, the switch over then from Owen Farrell taking over the 10 duties um, at fly half really strided into his own. I think they're all going to compete for that 10 shirt. I'm not sure whether they'll go for a 10-12 combo of having uh, Owen Farrell alongside another fly half. I really don't think the Finn Russell-Owen Farrell combo worked very well in this game at all. I think they'll look to have one of the three bigger Finn Russell or Owen Farrell take over in that number 10 shirt. And they'll probably move to uh, either an Aki Henshaw combo or maybe even a Chris Harris Henshaw combo. Not sure how they're going to work that centre partnership. I'm sure one of these games they'll test Dan Bigger at 10 and Owen Farrell at 12 to see if they can link up. But for me, I don't think that uh, that uh, Finn Russell Farrell combo works at all. Uh, the next 10 minutes or so was just try central. Starting off, Gareth Davis try uh, from a scrum. The ball came out. Elliot Daly, fantastic little run, beats three defenders going through. Pass on the inside, Davies straight under the post, nice and easy, we know what he's going to do. I wouldn't be surprised if Gareth Davis is looked at uh, for the South Africa tours to be the substitute scrum half, knowing this is exactly what he does. Comes on from the bench, full speed. He's a little bit greedy sometimes, but always looks for the try. However, you need a guy to score a try, that's what you need. So get him on there, 
So I wouldn't be surprised if he's currently looking for maybe getting in that South Africa games on the bench. Uh, two minutes later, we got to see Josh Adams try number three. The hat trick coming in there. Um, there was a superb tackle. The uh, crossfield kick coming in from the Sigma Lions to the Sigma Lions winger. Josh Adams with a superb hit, knocking the guy to the ground. Sam Simmons over the ball, getting in there, ripping the ball out. Johnny Hill offloads it back to Josh Adams, the man who made the tackle, who then runs, I don't even know how far he must have run, 50 metres or so? It was just, just after the halfway line, ran all the way down, got himself nice under the post, so another successful conversion for Farrell. And then only four minutes after that, Josh Adams, still not done, uh, decided he wanted to have another try. The five-metre maul, which was used so much in this game, and I think will be a big... Uh, being thing being used in the South Africa game. South Africa using it themselves against Georgia. As we see, I think the Lions are using it as well to their own advantage. The five-meter mall did get stopped. It was a nice little ball played out wide. Sigma playing slightly too tight for anyone's, you know, sort of safety net there. And Josh Adams, if you give him room on that wing, he's always going to get around the outside for another try. And uh, we almost had another final one in the 80th minute. Uh, we had another Maul coming in here, of course, the Lions loving this Maul technique. 20 metres out, Maul goes to hand, they go down, they're running forward. They made about 20 metres or so, I'd probably say it was well beyond the 22. Um, and that driving Maul getting all the way to one metre before the line, uh, the, just sort of wheeled round to the outside and the Sigma Lions did actually manage to shut it down really really well uh, but it was a shame to not get another try in there I thought they could have done well there but in all honesty what a massive game um, I, you know I think the Lions will be very very happy with this score line uh, man of the match went to Hamish Watson um, I feel deserved Hamish Watson had a very good game to fair as he always does in fact he gets man of the match so much for Scotland as we see um, in all honesty, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if Josh Adams had got man of the match. I'm not a big fan of because someone gets a hat trick or something, they get man of the match. But I actually think Josh Adams played very well. Defenders beaten, defensive work and four tries is all very good. The attacking work from him was very good. And the link-up play, switching wings when he needed to as well, I thought was very good. I thought he could have potentially got in there. Um, and Ali Price played very well as, you know, as well, to be fair. Um, Courtney Laws in that line-out was an absolute monster. Um, he's really beginning to nail his name on there, potentially for that number six shirt. For me, that's going to be a real tight fight between potentially him and Tyke Byrne. But Tyke Byrne has the, the luxury of being able to play four, five or six. Um, Otoje played well, bar a couple of penalties going his way. I thought he played very well as well. So I think there's an awful lot of positives to take away from this game. And I think the Lions will be using this as a real big boost. A lot of people putting their names up as to who's going to be able to get in these teams now for these South Africa games. But that number seven shirt, that's going to be a tight-knit one. I'm really looking forward to see who gets that seven shirt. So what do you guys think? Of course, I'm just one guy on the internet talking nonsense about rugby. So make sure you drop down in your comments. What are your thoughts on the game? How do you think the Lions performed? What do you want to see going forwards from the team? Were you happy with the result? Were you unhappy with the result? Let me know down in the comments. I really enjoy reading through these. And this is a brand new setup for me. So if there's something you think I could add into this sort of review setup, Make sure you let me know. Of course, we will be doing preview videos and other videos going forward for the Lions games from here on in. So make sure you subscribe to the channel just to keep up to date with all the videos as they come out. I hope you've all enjoyed today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>